Hey, what's up guys? I feel like coming at you with another awesome card analysis. And once again, guys, we're jumping into Legend Duelist 4 or Legendary Duelist Sisters of the Rose to talk about the Akiza theme cards that were revealed finally today at the day I made this video. The Akiza is the main female protagonist from Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds and utilized the deck primarily based around plant type monsters all supporting her boss monster, the Black Rose Dragon. And these new cards that we've seen have finally turned Rose Dragons into an archetype, meaning that Blue Rose Dragon, Black Rose Dragon, and Black Rose Moonlight are not the only Rose Dragons. Unfortunately, given that Black Rose is called Black, Black Rose Moonlight is Black Rose Moonlight Dragon, I do not believe she counts as a Rose Dragon monster, although they may come out with an errata that specifies that she does, because she does still work really well in the deck, but given the way that one of the cards specifically lists Black Rose Dragon specifically, I don't think she's really going to, you know, too much synergy with the deck in terms of naming conventions, but still really worth wanting. Now, without any further ado, guys, let's start off by taking a look at the original Black Rose Dragon herself. She's a level 7 Fire Dragon Synchro with 2400 attack and 1800 defense. When she's Synchro Summoned, you can destroy all cards on the field. And while she's on the field, you once per turn, you can banish a plant-type monster from your graveyard to target a defense position monster your opponent controls, switch it to attack, switch, uh, change its attack to zero, and negate its effects until the end of the turn. Really cool. One of the most popular synchro monsters to ever come out in the early days of Yu-Gi-Oh, given the fact that she was a heavy storm and dark hole on legs. And that banish effect with plants is pretty devastating. She is a fire attribute, which is pretty weird given that most of the cards in that you would play around this are dark. Particularly given, of course, that her manga counterpart, which we're about to take a look at, Moonlight Rose, is a light. Speaking of which, Black Rose Moonlight Dragon is a level 7 light dragon synchro monster. Like her anime counterpart, she also has 2800 attack, 2400 attack, and 1800 defense. She requires one tuna and one or more non tuna monsters. And if she's special summoned or a level 5 or higher monster or monsters is special summoned to your opponent's side of the field, you can target one of them, chuck it back in your opponent's hand, and this effect is a hard once per turn. She's just as easy to summon out as the original Black Rose Dragon, and 9 times out of 10, at least very early on, she's probably going to be a much safer play, particularly if you're going first. So definitely run two copies of her in your deck if you're ready to do so. The pack is also confirmed to be reprinting the original Black Rose Dragon as well as the first real support for Black Rose, which is Blue Rose Dragon as commons. So Blue Rose Dragon is a level 4 uh, Dark Dragon with 1600 attack and 1200 defense. When she's on the field and destroyed and sent to the graveyard, you get to target Black Rose Dragon or a plant monster in your graveyard and special summon it. There's a really cool crazy combo which I'll show you when we get to uh, White Rose and Red Rose that you can use using her. The first new card in the pack, of course, is the Dark Rose Fairy. She's probably, by the looks of it, a retrain of Akiza's original Rose Fairy. Unfortunately, she's not a plant, which really surprised me, because why wouldn't she be a plant? Why is she a fairy? I don't know. This deck is meant to be plants and dragons, not plants, dragons, and fairies. But she's still pretty good. She's a level 2 Dark Fairy with 800 attack and 1000 defense, and each of her effects can only be used once per turn. If a tuna is special summoned, she can be special summoned from your hand. And if she's in your graveyard, you can send a card from your field or hand to the graveyard and chuck her either on the top or bottom of your deck. You know, there's lots of good ways to use a second effect basically to dump plant monsters or rose dragons in your graveyard. So you can use their effects, uh, bring them out from grave to do various things with your tunas, as, um, with your white rose and your red rose. As well as, you know, banishing plants for your black rose dragon's effect. So you'd probably run her at two copies because her effect is only a hard one, is a, you know, is a hard once per turn. But you can do some cool synchro shenanigans with her given that red rose is a level three tuner. Their synchro monster is... Uh, called Garden Rose Maiden. She's a Dark Plant Synchro with level 5 with 1600 attack and 2400 defense. She requires one tuna plus one or more non tuna monsters, and her, she, her, her effects are a hard once per turn. Her first effects, if she's special summoned, you can add Akiza's well known field spell, Black Garden, from your deck or graveyard to your hand. And her second effect is she can be banished from your graveyard, then target a Rose Dragon Monster or Dragon Synchro Monster in your graveyard and special summon it. So you can, using her effect, bring back Black Rose Moonlight, as she's not a Black Rose Monster, as she's not a Rose Dragon, but she is a Dragon Synchro, and you can, of course, use her sort of with other Dragon Synchros if you really want to. But, of course, she's meant to support this deck. 
Uh, she's pretty cool in the sense that she can get Black Black Garden, and we have another card here that works with in the set this deck that works with Rose Garden with uh, Rose tokens as well. I do think Black Ro Black Garden may be printed reprinted as a common as well in uh, the OC in, at least in our version because I know the last printing of Black Garden was uh, in Legendary Collection 5Ds, and at least on the local scene at the time I made this video, everyone's scrounging to get Black Garden, so I didn't think it would be too relevant to this new support, but apparently it is, so we have a card that searches Black Garden, um, but the main reason I'd be using this card is the fact that she can bring back your Rose Dragons from Graveyard, she's also a plant, so you can banish her if you really are desperate, you can banish her for your Black Rose Dragons effect. The one problem I have with her is she is a level 5, and our tuna... Uh, you know, our Tuna Monster Red Rose Dragon is a level 3, so you, they'd make a level 8. So you can't make Black Rose with these two monsters, but you can make a level 8 Dragon Synchro. So you could make, like, Stardust or Red Dragon Archfiend. I mean, I'm just picking up the most generic Dragon Synchros, but there are plays you can do with her as well, which is pretty cool. The next card we're taking a look at is not in the pack itself, at least in the OCG version. It may come to us in our version of the pack. Um, or, you know, Kunami could pull a Kunami and make it a, a jump promo for us as well, and meaning that we have to wait for a special to actually play this deck. White Rose Dragon is a Dark Dragon level 4 with 1200 attack and 1000 defense. Her first and third effects can only be used as a hard once per turn. If you control a Tuna monster that is a dragon or plant, she can be special summoned from your hand. So obviously if you control Red Rose, you can special summon her out from your hand, or if you have any other plant tuna such as the, you know, the normal uh, level 4 plant tuna or um, copy plant or glow up bulb as well, you can special summon her. Uh, her second effect is when she's normal summoned, you can special summon a rose dragon monster from your hand or graveyard except herself. So, you know, you can summon uh, red rose. You can also bring back black rose as well if black rose is already chilling in the graveyard. Her third effect is if she's sent to the graveyard as synchro material, you can send a level 4 or higher plant type monster from your deck to your graveyard, just so you have fodder to banish for your Black Rose Dragon, which is pretty cool. She works insanely well with the Red Rose Dragon, which is a level 3 Dark Dragon Tuna with 1000 attack and 1800 defense. Her both her effect can only be used as a hard once per turn. If she's sent to the graveyard as Synchro material, you can special summon any Rose Dragon monster you want from your hand or deck, except herself. So, I don't know. Bring out Blue Rose. Uh, and then, of course, uh, if she's sent to the graveyard for a Synchro material, either for Black Rose Dragon specifically, or a Plant Synchro monster, you can add either the spell or the trap we're about to take a look at. So, obviously, the really cool play you can do with this is you can Normal Summon your White Rose Dragon, She'll special summon your Red Rose Dragon from your hand. Then you can Synchro Summon with these two. Make your Black Rose Dragon. White Rose will mill you a plant. Red Rose can summon you out Blue Rose straight from the deck. As well as add either the spell or the trap to your hand. And then of course she'll special summon it. Black Rose will nuke the board. Blue Rose's effect will activate. You can bring Black Rose Dragon back to the field. And then you have a plant monster in your graveyard already banished. In case your opponent has some crazy shenanigans where one of their monsters actually survived you nuking the board. Uh, you can make its attack zero and you can swing. Assuming it's in defense mode um but yeah the fact that you can nuke the board um and then get your black rose dragon back out on the field super easily is super cool of course with this play as well you can also use this play to special summon out your uh your you know dark rose fairy as well uh as a per and then you know you get four monsters on the field um as you know potentially get four monsters out on the field and then you have the option to either make black rose uh black rose moonlight or or you can even make uh, the Garden Rose uh, Maiden as well. So lots of different players you can do with these cards, which is one of the reasons why Right Rose is such an important card for the deck. First up, or next up, guys, is the Quick Play spell card called Blooming Rose. Now, this is one of the two Frozen Roars. This is one of the two cards that uh, your Black Rose, your Red Rose Dragon can search when it's used for Synchro Summon of Black Rose or a plant. The other is Blooming Rose. Frozen Roars is a Quick Play spell card that can only be used once per turn. Uh, you can send one face-up monster you control to the graveyard, apply one of the following effects depending on the type of the monster you sent. If you send a plant during the end phase of this turn, draw two cards, then discard a card. And if it's a non-plant, you can add a level 4 or lower plant type monster from your deck to your hand. Now, I don't know too many plant monsters you would be running in this deck other than maybe Carrot Man um, or, uh, you know, Copy Plant. You can add Glow Up Bulb as well, which is really, you know, sort of cool. Um, but, you know, most of the time, I'll definitely be using this for the plant effect, um, which means I'll be chucking a lot more plants in the deck. 
But this works really well with Carrot Man because in the opponent's M phase, you can send Carrot Man to the graveyard with this card, draw two cards, ditch a card, you're probably going to ditch a plant, another plant monster anyway, or a Rose Dragon, and then you can do different shenanigans based on that. So it's a very cool card. Um, artwork is absolutely gorgeous. Pretty cool. It works really well more as well as a generic plant support card, um, you know, rather than just being a Black Rose support card. So I could probably see this card being played in other decks like Predator Plants or Romages, just because they're able to get, you know, draw two cards. It's a draw card within a plant archetype. And it's obviously a much better version of Fragrance Storm, so... The trap card, of course, is Blooming Rose. It is a normal trap where its second effect can only be used once per turn. Uh, its first effect is to special summon Rose Tokens, Plant, Dark, Level 2, 800 Attack, and 800 Defense. Uh, in defense position to either player's side of the field, up to the number of field spell cards in the field zones, as well as either player's graveyard, which is really interesting, as of course these are the same tokens that Black Garden makes, so you do have some nice more synergy with Black Garden specifically. If it's in your graveyard, you can target Black Rose Dragon or a plant monster you control, banish the monster, and if you do, place this card at the bottom of your deck. Return the monster that was banished by this effect to the field during the next standby phase. It's a really interesting effect. It's a, obviously a protection card. It's not as good as some of the other protection cards we've seen, like, you know, the Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon one from the current uh, Doors pack. But, uh, you know, it is kind of like a time machine, you know, or like a Teferi's protection sort of thing from Magic. You know, you can take black, you can take your Black Rose Dragon out of the game for one turn, and then she'll come back and she'll devastate you, which I think is really cool and really fitting with the majesty of Black Rose Dragon, because whenever Black Rose Dragon is summoned, you know, Akiza always brings out these massive fireworks and sort of stuff like that. So, really cool cards. But that's it, guys. Obviously, there is one other card that you can run in the deck. It is called uh, Thorn of Malice which basically equips the Black Rose or a plant, gives it 800, the monster it attacks can't be destroyed by battle, and they lose 800 attack. It is probably still worth running at one or two copies in the deck, um, as you're probably still running a lot of plants in the deck, particularly if you're running uh, Frozen Roars, as you will be sending, um, you know, utilizing plants a lot more. But anyway, guys, what do you guys think of this new support? Would you like to see Black Rose get an upgraded form in the future? As well as that, what do you think of the other two new duels they've announced for this set, which are Alexis's Cyber Angels, surprisingly, and what breaks my heart, Anna Kaboon's uh, Kaboom's uh, let round, you know, trains, which from Zexal, which is a huge disappointment for me, as I would have loved to have seen Rio Castle get support, as her deck is practically unplayable. As well as that, guys, feel free to check out my friend Real the Reaper's channel. He gave me a massive shout out in his Harpy video. Go check out his Harpy video and give him some love. There'll be a link in the description to his channel at the end. If you like this video, please remember to like and subscribe. If you liked my analysis of the Har the Black Rose deck, why don't you go take a look at my analysis of the Harpy cards, which are up here on the channel as well. And once again, guys, if you like the video, remember to like and subscribe. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll catch you for my next video.